what I've been making each month and I haven't filmed a video in a couple of months so I've got quite a bit to show you today. I've got some knitting and some sewing and spinning so I'm going to put my cup of tea down and I'm going to dive straight in and I'm going to talk about what I'm wearing first because I've got a handmade outfit on today and this is the Hemlock Tea by Grainline Studios and I sewed this up in a viscose jersey fabric from Lady McElroy I think the brand is called. Um, but I'll leave links to everything in the show notes. If you're looking for show notes just below this video there'll be a link that'll take you over to my blog and I'll put links for all the patterns, yarns, anything I talk about today there'll be links for all that and as always there's actually an email list that you can join if you want to get show notes straight to your inbox. Every time a new video is uploaded I send an email to my mailing list um, for anybody that just wants those show notes there's a list that you can join and yeah the link to sign up to that will be below. So yes I've got the hemlock tea and I've actually done this a little bit differently to you've seen me use the hemlock pattern quite a few times on this channel and usually I do it without the sleeves and without the collar and just have it as like a very um, sort of cropped little summer kind of sleeveless top but this time I actually wasn't planning to make this I thought that the pattern that I used for my t-shirts was this hemlock tea but it's actually the Mandy Boat tea and it's been so long since I signed up a, um, a pattern like this I hadn't done a t-shirt for ages I just went straight for the hemlock tea sewed it up and when I put it on I was like this doesn't look like my t-shirts that I've been wearing and realized it's because those t-shirts where I have got the sleeves those were all on the Mandy boat tea pattern so it's no big deal I have got more of this fabric so I'm gonna do another Mandy boat tea because I really like the fit of that one um, but this is just nice to have a little slightly different look I'll stand up so you can see and when I stand back you'll see that I've got some handmade trousers on as well I've done the Helen's Closet Arden Pants in a gorgeous viscose linen blend. So let me stand up and I'll show you. So I'm going right back. There we go. So I have, um, oh, dropped my pillow. I've actually bought the legs in a tiny bit. So I took from about the mid thigh point, I'd say, I just drew a straight line right from that point and came a little bit on each of the, um, do you call it a cuff when it's the bottom of your trouser? But basically like the bottom of the trouser where you're gonna hem it, I just drew a straight line from each of those points and yeah, I was able to get that slightly more tapered leg look. And um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but I've kind of tried to do a very realistic view of this fabric for you. So I'm really, really pleased with how this is washing and wearing. It's a 70%, um, let me get it right. Yes, it is 70% viscose, 30% linen. And yeah, it's been brilliant. So these trousers, I hadn't ironed them or anything before I sat down. So they just come straight from folded up in my wardrobe. They weren't even hanging. They were literally folded up and yeah, I'll give you another look, just because you probably weren't looking at the creases, and you'll see there's a little bit of creasing, but nothing compared to what you usually get with linen. So really, really pleased with this fabric, and we'll definitely be looking out for more blends like that with the sort of much higher viscose quality, because it has a very linen feel, drapes, the way everything feels the same as some of the pieces that I've got with thick, um, with a higher linen percentage, but you just don't get the creasing, which I feel like that's the perfect blend. There's a little bit of creasing, you get that natural kind of linen feel, but it's just, yeah, usually you'll know, if you wear linen trousers, it's like the second, if you go anywhere in the car, you get out and you're gonna have those like creases all kind of down the legs, and that's kind of fine. I don't, it doesn't bother me. I wear linen pieces, I've got some linen shirts, and you kind of just go with that rumple vibe. It's That's what it's meant to look like. But I do really like that it's got the linen feel, but it's not so obvious all the creases. You get a little bit of creasing, but not as much. So I think that's a win. So very pleased with um, both of those pieces. Um, I think I'll stick with sewing very quickly before we move on. And then I'll keep all the sewing bits together and we'll move on to knitting because I've got some fabric here that I've ordered so I can knit, um, not knit, sorry, um, sew a skirt. So my plan for this fabric is I'm gonna sew, um, I've done the 
can't think who the designer was, but there's a free pattern for an elasticated waist skirt that I wear all the time. I'll put the links to that in the show notes. Um, links to everything that I talk about today, all the fabrics, yarns, all that kind of stuff will be in the show notes. So if you look below this video, um, there's a link to sign up to a newsletter if you want to get the show notes straight to your inbox. And every time a new video like this goes live, I send an email to the people on that list and they get all the show notes links in an email straight away and a notification that video has gone live or you can just click the link go over to my blog and you'll see a list of all the links for everything that I talk about in this episode so that show notes below and yeah I'm going to do a skirt but I'm going to do it slightly different I'm going to kind of do a faux button skirt so I'm going to um, do yeah buttons all the way down the front it will look like a buttoned up skirt, I'm not going to just sew the buttons on, I'm going to have it so it will have the sort of plackets and the buttons, I'll probably take them sort of like three quarters of the way down so you'll have a little bit of a slit at the bottom, but instead of having it sort of like a button closure at the top, I'm just going to do a waistband with an elasticated waist, I'm not going to have it so that you're buttoning up the skirt or anything like that, so just for super, it's really easy, it's really comfortable, they're very very quick to sew, but it just give me a bit of a different look to the skirt that I wear all the time, so yeah, that's my sewing plans and that's all my sewing bits for the day, we'll chat about my knitting now, and I think I'll talk about my um, cardigan that I'm making because this is the bit. I'm, this is the piece I'm probably most excited about, and I've got this in one of my um, new bloom bags. So um, if you're new here, I print my own fabric and I make project bags. So you can find these in my shop at the moment. I'll talk a little bit more about the bags in a second because I've got some kits as well with some socks that I've done. If you've been following me anywhere else, if you're on my newsletter or on Instagram, you'll have seen all these um, pieces because. I had a shop update last weekend um, but yeah in here is a cardigan that I've been working on and you might have heard of this because um, I've seen already I think it's got like a hundred um, projects have already been made and it's a very very new cardigan so it's obviously super popular but this is my swatch um, the current cardigan is by Rebecca who has a podcast as well I think it's the Crayo Bayer podcast and um, yeah it's a really really lovely stitch pattern you can see it's this lovely kind of holy lace and the yarn I'm using is the same that she used in the pattern it's Cascade 220 and I really really like this yarn I've not used this before and now I'm wondering why I didn't realize that it was so good more people need to talk about this I think because um, it's a really really good yarn good price point and um, for sweaters and cardigans and actually when I was looking through the projects although it's the yarn used in the pattern not I don't think I'd seen anybody else that had used this yarn which did make me start to question like is there a reason people are not um, using this yarn so maybe there's something I don't know but um, as far as the knitting side of it goes I've been very pleased with it so this is how far I've got so far and is this the front yeah oh I've got um, a little stitch marker where is it here can you see that and I made that I'm not sure how close I need to get for you to see but yeah I made a little stitch marker I also I actually I um did these as well my little bracelet so I got if you um you might have seen some posts that I did with these so I did some little bracelets and some stitch markers had a whole weekend where I went diving into um <laughs> into making kind of jewelry and stuff so these um literally I just used this elastic thread that you can use for beading and for my um, stitch markers I had some tools already from a workshop I did with Kate of Grace and Flora jewellery she does beautiful like nature inspired jewellery and I took a workshop with her a few years ago and came away with um, all the pliers and things that you needed so yeah when I found a local place that was doing beads I ended up coming home with a load of beads and spending a weekend making stitch markers and and yeah <laughs> doing some jewelry pieces so I'll put some links to those bits as well if you're interested in that but um, basically what I was trying to say was I've been using that stitch marker and moving it up um, so I can see my progress and this is how quickly it's knitting because I 
that's basically like an evening's worth of work and I don't knit for hours and hours in the evening. I go to bed quite early, finish working quite late, so usually a couple of hours, but it is just flying off my needles. This is actually, this is a week's worth of work with me not working crazy on it, basically is what I'm trying to say, is this, I cast it on exactly a week ago and actually that includes my swatch, so swatching time, drying time, um, and then, yeah, casting on. So I've got about 10 inches, I think. I'm at the point where I'm going to separate for the sleeves. And this is a pattern which has several different variations. And I'm going to do a v-neck version with short sleeves. And um, my plan is to sort of have it as a layering piece that I can wear over summer dresses, like sleeveless summer dresses that... Um, in the UK, <laughs> it's not a secret that we have very changeable weather and right now it's like gorgeous sunshine and I'm very, very hot actually sitting in front of the window talking to you today. But literally yesterday it was cold and it was raining. So you just, it's it's very changeable and even in one day you can get totally different um, temperatures. So the idea is that in the evenings on a nice day when I've been wearing a summer dress and I just want something in the evening when the sort of sun goes down, it cools down, I have something like this that I can just put over and I've got, my outfit will work for all the different temperatures of the day. <laughs> so really, really happy. Yarn is very soft. It's woolly, but it's got very nice soft handle to it. So I think it's gonna be really comfortable to wear that as well. I'll show you what that looks like in the ball, if you're interested, in the white colorway. It's a lovely soft, um, it's like a nice cream, but it's not too warm. Maybe it's called an ivory if it's that kind of cooler toned um, off-white. There we go, let's look at it in the hank. And yeah, loving that, really enjoying the project. The stitch pattern's very easy to memorize. Once you get going, I kind of look at each line and yeah, I can read my knitting and I know what I'm doing. So really, really good pattern. I think you, um, you'll enjoy that if you'd like to knit that as well. So next thing, following on, I think I'll show you my socks. So also in the same collection of this, I have um, a little bloom sack, which at Christmas time, if you remember, I did my joy sacks. And these project bags are the perfect size for socks and mitts. And basically I've put some kits together with Olivia of This Handmade Life and I've knit her bloom socks. And the yarn I've used is the Fiberco Amble. And this is so lovely, I love this color. And um, there's two colorway options and there are only two kits left in the shop. So I'm pretty sure they'll still be there when, you, um, when I upload. I don't think they're gonna miraculously sell in this hour or two but um there's one there's literally one of each kit so there's one in the dark pink which is walk me home and one in the light pink which is wild rose and these are both um 70% wool, 20% alpaca, and 10% nylon. And I've talked about these a lot before. It's one of my favorite sock yarns because it has an eco-friendly treatment that makes it washable. It doesn't use all the harsh chemicals and things that, um, the sort of harmful practices that are in traditional superwash. But they worked really, really hard to develop um, over several years a yarn that could be washed, but is more friendly to the environment. So I love that. And most importantly, the main thing is that I love the socks and the fabric that it creates. So these are the Buds and Bloom socks by This Handmade Life. And I actually, I have, um, I know I said I have one of each of the kits. So I've got kits with the yarn, but I also have the bags available in various combinations without the yarn. So if you just want the pattern and a bag, or um, let me show you, I've got things like um, DPN Cozies, yeah, I have got one in here. Little lavender sachets and let's see, was it in here? Probably, yeah, it's DPN cozies. You don't have to use DPNs, you can use circular needle. Um, but they're knit from the cuff down and it's a really lovely, fun pattern and it just works perfectly with my bloom theme because you can see it looks like those, um, you know, the before the blossom comes out and you have the branch, it's just got those little buds that are about to, about to burst. That is exactly what it looks like. So really love how these socks turned out. They're very soft. I've knit 
several pairs in the amble and it's such a hard wearing yarn. I actually have a pair that I use in when I go hiking and they really have got, I don't know, your feet, that's, that's probably a good test, isn't it, <laughs> to how well they wear. And they probably got, through heat and stuff, I've knit them in like a brown yarn. So they probably have got a bit felted on the bottom slightly. Um, but the main thing is there's no holes. There is no holes. I mean, I'm not trying to make them keep them looking perfect. And my socks that... Um, I don't wear in my hiking boots. Those um, haven't got felted at all. They've kept really nice. The one thing I'll say is probably because the alpaca content, they do start getting really, really fluffy at first. <laughs> so they might look a little bit funny if they've got sort of really kind of fluffy looking, but the thing you can do with those is depilling. I've got one of those um, clothes shavers that gets rid of all your pills and your bobbles. And if you run one of those over your socks, they literally will look brand new. I'm not joking. I have had some socks where they were starting to look kind of, um, yeah, really, they didn't, it wasn't that they had pills on them. It was just, you can see these look, they have a little bit of a halo to them. And these ones that I had, they would just look like they had a really <laughs> crazy halo going on. Use the pillow all over them and yeah, they look like brand new. So really, really great sock yarn. And I know lots of people like knitting cuff down. So this is a pattern for all my cuff down knitters out there. So go over to my website, check out the kits and yeah, I think you'll really like those. So um, next up, I'm going to show you, I have this in the same bag, why did I put that away? <laughs> so I was really kindly um, sent some, what is the, I think it's Yana Delic. Yeah, Yana Delic from the John Arben team. And I got a little mini skein of this. And this rarely happens. I saw, I think actually, yeah, it was Rebecca of the Crayo Bayer podcast. She was saying that she thinks um, a lot of, podcasters um, are probably not disclosing when they get sent things but I don't know maybe other podcasters get lots of emails about sending them yarn and things but I don't know they don't send it to me <laughs> so I was really flattered when out the blue um, I had an email saying did I want to try this yarn and they were really lovely because I completely missed the email it had gone into my junk folder and um, yeah I was going through having a really good clean out trying to get back to inbox zero and I I saw this email and I replied to them because I didn't want them to think I was rude and I just ignored them and said really sorry this has gone into my junk um loved the launch they'd launched this new yarn and said yeah if you ever want to reach out and send something for um me to try out I'd happily do that because I'm a customer of John Arbin's you'll see in a minute I've bought um fiber from them so and they I didn't pick the color they sent this and it's a lovely color and yeah, what I'm going to show you is the um, mitt that I started. So this is called the Last Minute Hands... Oh, what is it called? Let me have a look on my show notes because I wrote it down. It's not an English word. Um, Last Minute Handstulpen by Suzanne Muller. So this is... Let me pop it on so you can see. And basically, I just thought it'd be nice rather than knitting a swatch... I thought it'd be nice to actually see how it knit up in something sort of wearable. So I haven't actually knit, I can knit the other one. So actually, um, that's a good point, because they sent two minis, so you can kind of see that two minis would get you a pair of these mittens. And it's a really nice pattern, I like the shaping that it's got around the thumb. And I like these kind of very simple, plain kind of um, mitts. But yeah, I knit one of these up so I could try the yarn and just see how it has a really lovely woolly feel to it. It's a, let's see what the blend is. It's a light Aran worsted and it's, yeah, it's the Falkland Corridale. So yeah, it's a lovely, lovely sheepy woolly yarn. Feels lovely. I think I've said before, I'm not super sensitive to wool, so it's very subjective. Some people maybe can't wear this next to skin, but I certainly could. And yeah, I think after seeing this, I think it would be really nice in a sweater. Can you see it's kind of got slight shifts in colour and yeah, that was really, really nice way to use that up. Probably the wrong time for doing mitts, but I should cast on and knit the second one soon because I don't know if you know, but like sometimes if you leave a really long gap between casting on a pair of something you can get quite different results your gauge can kind of change over time so I think maybe I'll do that I think it was um Hannah Lisa on the Making Stories podcast she just had that and I don't even think there was a long gap between 
the two mitts that she'd knitted. I think maybe it was just one was a much tighter gauge because she was maybe knitting faster or a little bit more stressed or something, but um, that can happen. So I better cast on my other one. But I hope you like that. And yeah, thanks again to people at John Arbum for sending that across for me to try. It was lovely of them to do that. Um, what else should we look at? Um, oh, I've got another, um, oh, I've got another project to show you that I'm feeling a bit sad about. So, if you watched last time, you'll know I was working on the Weekender, and that's in one of my pressed flower bags. But I'm really sad to say, I think I'm going to frog this, <laughs> and it's sad because I've only got the sleeves, but. I've used this yarn before, so it's the wool, um, what are they called? Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes, and this is the Bramble Heatherway colour. And I think it's the colour, I just really, I've knit several things in brown, so it might seem weird to say that this is just, that I don't like it because of the colour, but it's just that it's such a flat cool brown. The other browns that I've used have been very much more warm toned, they've had a real richness to it, a lovely depth of colour. Um, another brown yarn that I've used from this this same range is the Merlot Heather and I knit my Essena sweater in that which is by Jacqueline Seasleck and I love that, that's gorgeous and it's one of my most worn sweaters which is why I picked another brown but this is just not doing it for me so I'm going to stand up and I don't know, it seems like, when I tried it on, I just don't love it and I feel like when you've put so much time into knitwear, you need to love your knits and I think that can be a really positive thing if you know your own mind and you cut your losses and you frog that yarn and I'll give it to a friend or I'll donate it to our local charity shop that does take yarn and someone will be able to, someone will be able to make something that they love out of it. But I will talk about, the other reason why I think I'm going to frog it is because it wasn't just the colour. When I tried it on, I really don't think I like this straight across neck that just, it kind of really does cut across and I just think I'm not going to find that comfortable. This is an Andrea Maori pattern, The Weekender, and it's had so many projects and everybody I see it on, I love it. But it's one of those ones that when I tried it on, I didn't love it, <laughs> which is really sad. But um, because I kind of thought it was a foolproof pattern to knit, and maybe it would be if I'd knit it in another colour. If it was a colour I loved, I probably could have overlooked the fact that it's a bit uncomfortable in the neck. Um, and maybe with blocking out, I could have fixed that slightly and it would have felt a bit more comfortable. But it is an interesting project because I've done it a little bit differently. It's written to be um knitted with the stockinette but then you turn it the other way around so that you have the reverse stockinette showing and I don't really like reverse stockinette um, showing on my garments as I say literally I don't think I've seen a person in a weekender that I don't love but I knew that I wouldn't love that texture when I'm seeing it in real life and not just through a photo or video so I've knit mine this way and the way I was able to do that and have this lovely sort of centre detail was I knit a half brio stitch right in the middle. So where you would have been doing your slip stitch or however it was that you create the kind of um, spine that you have on the front and back, I did it right in the centre so it follows really beautifully from the ribbing. And that is a detail that's used in my Ursina that I mentioned before. That has this sort of central detail that is knit using a half brio stitch. So yeah, if anyone's wanting to do that, that is how you can um, work it so you have the stockinette showing and yeah, and still have a lovely central detail that really pops because you could do the slip stitch, but it just didn't it didn't stand out enough, I think that's the thing. On the reverse stockinette side, it looks really um, defined, but it just didn't look that um, great on the stockinette side. So, yeah, a bit sad that that hasn't worked out so well, but sometimes I feel like it's kind of like that feeling when you're like, no, I'm the boss of my knitting and I'm not loving it, so I'm going to move on. I'm getting so much joy from knitting this cardigan, and that's what knitting's about. So there's plenty of other projects to use the yarn for, and yeah, going to frog it. <laughs> so kind of sad. But let's talk about spinning. Let's go on to happier note. And in my, I've got in my big sweater sack, I've got all my spinning bits. So these are great. If you're in, if you're one of these new people that's gotten spinning like me, basically I keep all my yarn in these paper bags 
and I just get my paper bags. Um, somebody asked me, I just order them on eBay. You can <laughs> search for paper bags and you can get these little bags. And what I've got in here is from John Arben and these were things I bought not gifted actually I say that I didn't buy them this is a lovely gift from my sister for my birthday I did give her a big hint because she's not a knitter or spinner <laughs> so I had a list and she picked these so this is the Viola top in the cinnamon and it's an organic farm Falklands merino and this is what it looks like oh isn't that gorgeous so this is what it looks like and I actually had this on my wheel right now so I can show you what it looks like spun up, looking lovely. And bearing in mind, if you're an experienced spinner, my singles probably don't look the best, but I'm a newbie, haven't got a lot of spinning experience. So these singles, um, basically what I've been doing is, so these are like 100 grams, I've got a couple of different things in here, and I've been separating them out to sort of 50 grams, and I'll spin up those 50 grams of singles, chain ply them to get the yarn and then I'll do the same with the other 50 so it's almost like a way of like I can see how my yarn turned out and then have a play to think oh I want to try and get it thinner or I want to try and get it thicker or I don't know maybe more consistent but it's I think it's a really nice way of actually being able to compare rather than comparing different spins with different yarns or different fibers I should say I think it's really nice to compare your spinning with the same fiber and two different spins, if that makes any sense. So this is what I've got on my spinning wheel at the moment, and I'm using the Woolmakers Bliss TT, which is not a wheel that I hear a lot of people talk about. I think maybe it's more of a European brand. They, I, well, it, I know that it's based in Europe, so I don't think they've really made the jump over to the US, so I think it's not such a well-known wheel outside of Europe, but actually, oh, you can see it, yeah, it's just down here, <laughs> so. Yeah, really nice kind of, I've found it a very good entry level wheel. So I've got that colour and I've actually finished spinning up my, um, let's see what's this called. So this is the other fibre I got for my birthday. And this is lovely. And let's see what this the colour we called. It's Soul Drums. And this, oh, this is a yarn delic colour. Oh, so that's interesting. So this is the Yarnadelic fibre, which is the Falklands Corydale. And you can see, so this is how John Arbum spin it on their uh, machines. And then this is mine. So <laughs> you kind of see, it's not as lovely and even as the John Arbum, but I think I've done pretty well for a newbie. And I love the colourways you get with their um, their fibres. I think this would make a really lovely sweater, actually. I think it might be some a good colour that would be really, really wearable and get a lot, yeah, a lot of wear out of a sweater. It's um, it's blue with brown, really lovely soft. So very, very pleased with how that turned out. I think I showed you last time this one. Um, can't remember what this colourway is called. I have to put that in the show notes. But I think this was like my second or third spin. And this one I've actually knit into a swatch. I can't remember if I've shown you. So I, I did put this in, um, this is it balled up. And as it's in my spinning bag, I'll show you quickly. Because even if I've shown you before, who doesn't like looking at yarn swatches? So this is how it spun up. So this is it in the skein. This is how it knit up in a swatch. And have a look, see if I've got that. Might have a little tiny bit of fibre. Yeah, that's the fibre. So that's what it looked like in the fibre and then that's what it's looked like knit up. And I really like seeing that because I find um, there's someone I follow on Instagram, Hikari, I think her name is. I'll put a link to her Instagram because if you like spinning, her feed is beautiful. But she recently showed um, some Rolex that she'd made for her shop and then she had it in the skein as well. And I love that because as someone who's really new to spinning, I do find it quite difficult to envision you see these like really beautiful bats and Rolex, but I can't um, figure out like what it will look like when it's spun up. And I know it changes depending on how you spin things. There's a book that I really want to get. I think it's called Yarny Texture, which really dives into 
how you spin your fibre to get different results. So that's something that's on my list that I want to get. But yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with my spinning at the moment. So yeah, if you're someone that's new to spinning as well, let me know in the comments how you're finding it because I've noticed loads of people are spinning right now. I think maybe it is a little bit affected by um, Andrea Mowry. If you watch her podcast, she has talked a lot about spinning and she really gives you confidence to just give it a go because she sort of, after spinning a few times, she sort of dove straight into a sweater spin and she's just very much like, have a go, see if you like it. And I think a lot of people have sort of, she does, She just makes it very approachable, I think. So I think a lot of people have dived into spinning since watching her. And then it's kind of had that filtered out effect. So even if you don't watch Andrea Mowry, I think lots of people that you follow on Instagram, people like that, they're probably spinning because of watching it. And then you see them and you want to drive in because who doesn't want to like have a go at making their own yarn. I think it's really cool. So I think that's everything. I've managed to whiz through all my projects, all my plans. Um, I hope you're all doing really, really well. I'm so glad to have sat down and chatted to you again. I would love it if you came over and had a look in the shop. Even if you don't want the kits, I've got the bags. Um, they're available to purchase separately. This would be perfect if you're going out and about this summer and you just want a very simple bag that will throw in your handbag or your purse. Um, these are great, that's how I tend to use mine really I use them loads as sort of storage bags so they're great for like storing stuff in my knitting stash and also as I say I'll like throw it in my bag if I'm going over to my mum's or something and they just really kind of like don't take up a lot of space because it hasn't got that gusted bottom. They are fully lined and they're beautifully made, hand printed so <laughs> getting a beautiful bag but it's just a little bit more profile than having something like this which you maybe want to sit and knit from at home more comfortably so yeah come and have a look at the show notes check out the shop let me know what you're doing where you are in the world I'd love to hear what you're knitting on because I've said before that's where I get a lot of my pattern ideas from hearing about what you're working on and yeah I won't leave it so long before coming back to chat to you so hopefully I'll see you here in a few weeks have a lovely day bye